Hello everybody, this is uh, Pastor Billy from the Father's House Church. I hope that you're doing well, and I hope that you're enjoying this season of uh, time to just relax, and because I know some of you are working every day. But anyway, I thought this morning I'd touch bases with you, and we talk a little bit about Jesus today, and about the goodness of God. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1, it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of God. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about God has a plan. The Bible tells us here that we need to look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. How many of you know when somebody is writing a book, more than likely, before they ever start writing, they have an understanding uh, of what the finishing of the book is going to be, how the book's going to turn out, and what the ending's going to be. But God has a plan for our lives. You know, we say that hindsight is 2020 because we can look back and we can see the mistakes we've made and we can see where that we could have done better or uh, we can see things that we wished we hadn't done and sometimes we have regrets and sometimes, you know, we count ourselves pretty blessed about the decisions we made. But anyway, we as human beings really can't see the future. We have to live by faith. God created it that way. But God knows the end and he knows the beginning and he knows everything in between. God has a plan. When Jesus was on the earth, amen, when it uh, came time for him to be crucified, he plainly told his disciples, but yet they were without understanding, and so they didn't know what he was talking about, but Jesus did. And so he plainly told them, you know, that, that he was going to be betrayed, and then that they were going to take him, and they were going to crucify him, and that he would be raised from the dead on the third day. This was God's plan. And you know, the disciples, when this began to go down, they really thought, man, what's going on in our world? Our world is being turned upside down. And so sometimes, you know, because we can't see the future and we don't understand what God's plan is, we feel like that's going on in our lives also. And some of you may even feel like this now, wondering what is going to happen. You know, I've been living for God for 50 years. And there's one thing that I have learned. Even though I don't know what the future holds, I know that my God does. And I have come to a conclusion that the word of God is true. Even though I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or next week in my life, I do believe this. Whatever happens, amen, is going to be orchestrated by God and it will be for my good. It may not be good to me. It may not feel good. It may not seem good. I may not understand it. But my faith in God tells me whatever happens will be for my good. Amen. Now, Jesus was a man. When we think about Jesus Christ, we think about him as the son of God. And he is, he was, and he always will be the son of God. But he also was a man. And he was judged as a man, and he died as a man, and he lived as a man. And so by the law, which we could read the scripture that where Jesus told him, I didn't come to destroy the law or the prophets, but I came that the law and the prophets might be fulfilled. And uh, he said, and none of it shall pass away until it's all fulfilled. And he said, he that is teaches the law and does it, amen, is great in the kingdom of God, but he that does teaches men 
doesn't teach men, and I guess I should have read the scripture, uh, and doesn't do these things or least in the kingdom of God. And so Jesus was actually talking about himself here. As a man, he kept the law, but he was also accused by the law, sentenced by the law, and was killed according to the law. They brought him to trial. They brought many witnesses against him. The Bible calls them false witnesses. But yet it was not what men witnessed against him that determined his fate. It was what came out of his own mouth. For the Pharisees, uh, they questioned him and said, are you the son of God? And he said, I am the son of God. And they said, we don't need to ask no more questions. He, we have heard him with our own lips and they sentenced him because of his accusation was blasphemy, which to their law meant he was worthy of death. So they, they uh, accused him, they sentenced him, and then they carried out the sentence and he died as a man. And so the Bible tells us that uh, it is appointed unto men once to die but after the death, the judgment. And we believe this, I mean, ever since I was a kid, I was taught, you know, when you die, then you go and you stand before God for judgment. And how many of you know that we know that God knows everything, doesn't he? Amen. We don't know everything. We see people do stuff or we hear about things. Uh, we don't know what's in their heart. We don't know the motives. We don't know why they did certain things. We don't know what was driving them, you know. And, but God knows everything. Nothing secret from God. He knows the thoughts, the intents, and the desires. God knows everything. And so we will be judged by God after we die. And so Jesus, after he died as a man, he also was judged by God. He went before, the, he went before God, and the accusation was brought that he blasphemed. He died as a man, a sinner man, because he blasphemed. And God said he did not blaspheme. And God declared him. The Bible tells us it's in Hebrew. God declared him to be his only begotten son. And so he was found innocent. And because Jesus was found innocent, amen, the Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. And so because Jesus was found innocent, amen, death could not hold him. So God raised him from the dead. That was the righteous thing for God to do because he committed no sin, even though he carried our sins and bore our sins and our sorrows as a man. But yet he did not commit any sin. He did not break one law. He fulfilled all the prophets. He, he kept all the law. And so therefore he was not worthy of death and death could not hold him and God raised him from the dead. This was a righteous thing for God to do. And so not only did God raise him from the dead, but God also, uh, what is that word they use when you've been falsely accused and they have to give you compensation? Uh, Anyway, you probably know that word. I'm just a country boy. I, I, I can think of it after a while, maybe. But anyway, because that he was falsely accused and falsely sentenced, amen, according to the law, God had to recompense him, amen, for damages. And so not only did God raise him from the dead, but God declared him to be Lord of lords and King of kings and gave him a name that was above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And also said that there, will, there is no other name given under heaven whereby men might be saved. So be careful, amen, when you start listening to these people that's talking about that Jesus was a, a prophet, a good prophet like, like other men that have lived in the world because he was not just a prophet, amen, God justified him when he raised him from the dead. Amen. God glorified him when he gave him a name that is above every name. Amen. And God exalted him and seated him at his own right hand. That's what God did. Do you hear me? God done this. Amen. And he done it all according to the law. 
And so we know that God is a good God. He is a just God. And that even though at the time the disciples didn't know what was going on, and they didn't understand, God was the author and the finisher of everything that happened there. And God is the author and the finisher of our lives. And we may not know what's going to happen, how this coronavirus and what's going on is going to end, amen. You may not know about your finances or, or whatever, amen, you may be facing at this time, but you can know this, that God is in control. He's the author and the finisher. And he's not going to do anything, amen, that, that will not ultimately uh, turn out for your good. And so uh, the Bible tells us here, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So, you know, in my lifetime, I've, I've made many mistakes. I've made some bad decisions. Uh, I failed uh, a lot of people. I failed God. I failed myself. But you know, through it all, I have found grace and I have found God faithful and I have found, amen, that uh, He has ways of recompensing us, amen, and giving us things, amen, that we don't really deserve and honoring us, amen, because He loves us. So, look up. Find something to do. You may not be able to go to church, but you are the church. Amen. See, you're the temple of God. You are the church, amen. And I, I, I say God kind of done this thing to get the church out of the four walls and get us out in the communities and, and, and start being the church, amen, uh, outside. Uh, I, I was thinking a while ago about how that uh, the Bible talks about how that he prepares us the table in the presence of our enemies. Uh, to me, it's been kind of like going to a buffet. I sat down this morning and I've watched three different preachers preach three different sermons this morning. And you know, it's, it's like I could pick and choose uh, what preachers that I want to listen to. So it's not like you can't get the word of God, Amen. but you can also do something. You know what I mean? You say, what can I do? How can I be busy? The Bible said Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Uh, I've been just whatever uh, doors open uh, for me, whatever opportunities that God gives me uh, to do good, that's what I've been doing. I have a neighbor that lives behind me that because of uh, sugar diabetes, he's lost one leg. He's not able to do to do anything, and so I just went over there and mowed his yard and cleaned up his trash, trimmed his trees, and, you know, uh, because I wanted something to do, and 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 that's what came in my heart. I just wanted to go do that for that man. I, I was over to the church, mowing the churchyard, and there's a lady that lives across the street from the church. Her yard was all grown up. She's She's sickly. She hadn't been able to, she doesn't have any way to clean her yard or anything. I just went over there and mowed her yard. So, you know, God will give you opportunities to be the church and just look at it like this, that he's the author and the finisher. And so take what God gives you, trust God, and, and uh, live by faith and join these great cloud of witnesses that the Bible talks about here, amen, that we can say, like they all said, amen, God was faithful and God answered the call. So I love you and I thank you for your time and I hope that this word encourages you a little bit. And I would like to say to, especially to my church family, I'm missing you dearly. Uh, I'll be glad when we can gather together again, but until we can, we're going to keep in touch with texting and Facebook and calling one another and whatever, whatever ways we can. All right, let me pray for you before we leave. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, God, to bless the people. I ask you, Father, Lord, to let the grace of your son, Jesus Christ, multiply itself in their lives, O oh Lord, that every need will be met I rebuke sickness and disease and poverty like and want. 
And for those that don't know you, Father, I pray, Father, that by your Spirit that you draw them nigh to you, Lord, and that they call upon the name that is above every name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.